Civil 3D uh, grading features, there's a few different ways to, to grade out a site. Um, you could go old school and just manually draft contours as polylines with elevations uh, on your site to generate a surface from that. You could also add Kogo points to your surface definition to fine tune your surface, so to speak, especially in flatter areas or in areas where you may have some drainage inlets or structures that you want to make sure the water's flowing directly to. Um, another option is to leverage the corridor modeling tools. If you're grading out a road or a long driveway or access route, the, the corridor modeling tools definitely come in handy. Um, personally, I don't do a whole lot of roadway design per se, um, but I have done a lot of, or not a lot, but a, a good amount of stream restoration projects. So we do a lot of stream restoration projects um, on the East Coast at least that I've uh, utilized or leveraged the corridor modeling tools for. And it's really, really handy tool. Once you get into um, some of the modeling aspects of it, you, you, you're probably never gonna use a different, <laughs> a different grading tool for stream restoration projects, at least. Um, when it comes to site grading specifically, though, for facility design work or like wastewater treatment plants and stuff like that, I would highly recommend leveraging the use of feature lines and grading objects to create your proposed surfaces. So for this example or demonstration, I'm going to um, open up a recent substation design I produced, which you can see right here. I'm in a 3D view, 3D isometric view, and if I initiate the 3D orbit command. You can see some of the modeling aspects of it. Um, we've got some stockpiles, we've got a roadway, we've got a pad, we've got grading to daylight uh, to meet existing, another stockpile up here. We've got some really cool things going on here. And then obviously your um, existing surface model. Let me see if I could change this to realistic real quick and see what happens, see what it looks like. So there you go. So yeah, it's just some really cool features and I'm going to go into a live demonstration for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new drawing. So now we've got the file created. Now we need to uh, associate the data shortcuts project file to this particular drawing and to do that we'll set working folder and Sadler yep we're in the right location picked up the data shortcuts file it's already there we'll right click on it again and associate to the current project or the current drawing updating the drawing and we'll click OK. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the existing grade. So to do that we go to data shortcuts, surfaces, we're going to select the existing ground surface model and create reference. We're going to change the style to survey so it shows up as existing. The rendered material, I'm going to make this soil, so when we go into like a 3D display, it just, it's, just makes it easier to view. Um, and then in model view, I'm going to turn the triangles on. And that's important when you start showing realistic views within Civil 3D is that you, for surfaces at least, you have the triangles being displayed. So let's zoom extents. I don't know why it didn't pick up the survey. We'll check that one more time. Okay, so there we go. We've got our existing surface model. If we go to Object Viewer, we can see it in 3D view. Pretty neat. Escape. Now I'm going to bring in my proposed site plan. In our case, it's, it's typically a base plan, civil base plan. It shows all our above ground features, but for Duke Energy, it's, they call it a site plan. It's just a site plan. they bypass the whole base file and just go straight into models, model files. So, now that we have that in there, we're going to start leveraging the grading tools. 
to start that off, I'm just going to create a polyline that goes around my pad outline. I'm going to snap to the endpoints and then type CL to close that so we have an enclosed polyline. If I select it, go to properties, we see that the clo it's closed. We have an odd elevation. Um, I know that since we have the existing model uh, data referenced in here, we can actually just hover over that surface and we can find out what the elevation is. So you can see at this point, at this point where my cursor is, it's 788 feet. If I come down here, it's 779. So let's set this at 780. So the polyline for the, pa uh, the pad boundary is 780 feet. Now, the next step is to actually create a grading object or a feature line from that. So we're going to go up to grading, create feature line from object, select the object, because that's what it says down here in the command line, and we'll hit enter. Now, when generating proposed designs or working with feature lines and, and grading objects in general, they always need to be assigned to an actual site. So we're going to create a new one and just call this pad, yeah, pad grading. So this feature line is going to be associated with this site and this way it knows once we group everything, the feature lines and the grading objects, it'll generate a dynamic surface that can be updated at real time, in real time. So we're going to erase the existing entity because I don't want a random polyline there. We're just going to convert it. You also have the option to assign elevation. So we already defined this as 780 feet. We could just accept that by unchecking, or we could redefine it if we um, had some second thoughts and wanted to change it to like 790 or something. We could overwrite that value there. Or we could also extract the existing um, elevations from the surface. If we had multiple surfaces here, we could select those. In this instance, we only have one particular surface in the file at this time. Um, this box down here, insert intermediate grade breakpoints. Um, so basically, any time this uh, feature line crosses over the triangulation of the existing surface, it's going to put a new vertice. Right now, we just want four vertices, one at each corner. So we're going to uncheck that box. And we're going to hit OK. So if we select that, right click, go to Elevation Editor, we can see that it picked up the existing grade elevations. And as I go to each, as I select each point, it's going to show you a little triangle symbol so you know where this actual point is. So as I go around, it goes around the perimeter of the pad as well. Right now, I'm going to set this back to 780 feet, and I'm going to close out. So now we have this feature line at the 780 feet we originally wanted to. So these could be updated at any time, right? If we look at this, and if we look at this feature line and the uh, existing surface in Object Viewer, we can see that all we have is a floating line, a floating pad outline right now. Some of it's below, some of it's above the surface. So what we need to do is we need to create a surface inside it. So to do that, we're going to go back up to grading and create grading infill. The site is the pad grading site that we already defined. Now we get into create grading group. We're going to to keep things consistent, we're going to call this uh, pad grading. We're going to check this automatic surface creation so we know that it will dynamically update as we make changes to it. And we're going to check this volume base surface and compare it to the existing ground. And what that's going to do, I'm going to get into it a little later, but what that's going to do is we're going to see some live dynamic updates to the volume calculations as we make changes as well. So we'll click OK for that. Again, the uh, render material, let's change this to short, grass short, and click OK. Just so when we look at it, it um, we know that there's a difference between the existing and the proposed grading style. We're, 
I like to just stick with the basic stuff, so I'm going to select HDR basic rating. Sometimes when you click on HDR no display, things go a little haywire, so let's just go with the basic rating. So now at the bottom it says select an area to infill. You'll notice that if we hover our mouse inside that enclosed feature line, the, uh, the boundary, the pad boundary highlights. If we click out, if we hover outside it, it dis disappears. So basically what that means, what that highlight means, um, just basically tells you that it's okay that it, accept, it will accept an infill to be applied in this location. So let's click inside and hit enter. Now, if we go into our prospector, expand surfaces, we now have this pad grading surface. If I select that surface and the existing surface, go back to that object viewer, you can see that we now have, it's not just a floating polyline anymore, we actually have a real surface being displayed. Again, some of it is above, some of it is below, but that's fine. We have a full surface being modeled at this point. Now, what we want to do is we want to daylight it to existing grade. So let's go back up to the grading, and we're going to select Create Grading. You'll notice here that the group automatically is set to pad grading because that's what we last used or last defined. The surface is essentially the target surface in which we're going to be daylighting to. And since we only really have one other surface in here, it automatically picks that up. If you need to change any of those, any of those definitions on the fly, you can change that here. You could select the grading group here, the group name if you have multiple groups. Um, as well as the target surface. If we had multiple surfaces in here that we could daylight to, we, would, we could easily select those there. So for now, we're going to uh, select the surface at slope, and that's going to, um, we're going to define some slopes to daylight to, to daylight the uh, proposed grade or the pad to the existing. And we click on this button to create the grading. We're going to follow the, um, the procedure down at the command line here. So it says select the feature. We're going to select the feature. Select the grading side. We want the outside, not the inside, because we already have that uh, defined as a flat area. So we'll click on the outside, apply to entire length. We'll say yes. Cut slope, let's just say 4 to 1. And fill slope will go 2 to 1 and we'll hit OK. And as you can see, it automatically generates that surface with those, with the criteria that we just defined. So if you select both the existing and proposed now, go to Object Viewer, our design is starting to come to life. You can see that it's daylighting down at a 4 to 1, and I'm sorry, at a 2 to 1, and daylighting up in the cut areas at a 4 to 1. So, coming back here, uh, we've got our uh, volume uh, tools right here. So if we click on this, we can see our calculations. These are going to be updated dynamically as we make changes to this. There's also a tool in here that can automatically rebalance. So this is pretty close, 620 cubic yards um, of fill. So it's pretty close to being balanced. But if we wanted it to be more exactly balanced, say to a zero value, we'll click OK, and this will automatically update. And it gives you an idea of the steps that were uh, taken into account. So to get it close to zero with the current design configuration, it ended up dropping that um, whole surface by 0 0.15 feet. So if we come back to this feature line, um, right click, go to Elevation Editor. It's no longer at that 780.00 value. It's now dropped it 0.15. So it actually did drop everything dynamically. It rebalanced, recalculated. Everything is dynamic. If we wanted to change this design on the fly, um, we can come back here and change some of these values. So 779, let's go down to 770 have a low spot at that point. Everything 
again, automatically updates here. You could see it update here in the grading volume tools. If we go to 270, so this corner right here, let's make that 775. And again, everything will automatically update. So if we come back here, we'll select the proposed and the existing surface, right click, go to object viewer. We can really start to see how things are being changed or affected. Um, let me just select the proposed. Might be a little easier to see. There you go. So you can see now it's actually being sloped down this pad. Now, if we wanted to keep that those values or the slope that we've defined go running across the pad and we just want to uh, raise and lower that surface to auto uh, balance again, we come back here, click on the automatically raise lower to balance volume the balance the volumes tool. We're going to keep zero. Hit okay and it will automatically update again. Recalculates everything and now we're as close as we can with the current configuration and the defined slopes that we have. We want to come back and change some of these values for the daylighting. We can come back say just say we want to go three to one for both cut and fill. Again everything automatically updates. Um, Where'd that go? Creative tools. Click OK and it'll automatically raise and lower that surface again. And now we're at 0.13. You can't get much closer than that. <laughs> so that's what I got for um, the grading tools. Super quick and easy example uh, within Civil 3D. Um, and it's probably starting to get your your mind thinking about how you can best leverage some of these tools for your project. I'll tell you from personal personal experience that I've dealt with a lot of funky things happening to my surfaces, specifically using site grading feature lines and grading objects in the past. 2016 and 2018, uh, Autodesk has greatly improved the stability, the overall stability um, and functionality of these tools, and this is pretty much all I use for site grading. Uh, specifically with on facility projects, wastewater treatment plant projects, stuff like that. Um, we do a lot of coastal work and there's a lot of flat, flatter areas, so these feature lines do come in handy, especially when designing like ditches and um, swales, drainage swales and all that stuff. And, and they're super easy to use and you get the expected results. You don't have to rely as much on hand calculations, um, which obviously helps out with some of the streamlining aspects of utilizing or leveraging this software.